What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher with The Durad, and I have with me today Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of The Durad. And today we're going to be talking about the impending trade war between the U.S. and China. Alexander, um, Trump has been hinting at this for a while now, and he made good on his promise. He imposed uh, tariffs on, on uh, China, and um, China retaliated and imposed tariffs back uh, very reciprocal tariffs, all the way down to the date that the tariffs are going to actually uh, start. And so just uh, just to give our viewers a background, uh, Trump imposed 25% tariff on about $50 billion in Chinese imports, and there's about 1,102 actual product lines that are going to be affected in, uh, in these tariffs that the U.S. is imposing on uh, Chinese goods. And China immediately reciprocated with $50 billion in tariffs, um, the list is not quite as extensive, but it does cover such things as soybeans, crude oil, um, natural gas, refined oil, oil, oil products, and et cetera. And the start date for, for this trade war, which is really what, uh, what it is, this tariff trade war, is July 6th for both countries. Alexander, uh, break this down for us. Why is Trump doing this? And does this benefit the U.S.? Right. Well, as you absolutely rightly said, he said he would do it. This is one of the things that Donald Trump was talking about during the election, which, uh, which he won and which resulted in him becoming president. And as you and I have often said about Donald Trump, he keeps his promises. He, he, at least he tries to. Now, why is he doing it? And whether, will it benefit the United States? I think that there is a very widespread view in the United States, including amongst the blue collar uh, uh, working class population of the United States, which was so important in winning Trump the election, that China has taken the US for a ride that ch cheap Chinese goods have been flooding the US market, that China is a currency manipulator, that it plays all kinds of games with the Chinese currency, and that the U US has not been able to withstand this attack on its economy and on its industries from China, which has flooded the US with Chinese goods. This is not the first time the US has made these kind of claims against other these uh, other countries. It, it, it said the same about Japan in the 1980s. It managed to deal with that by getting uh, the various currencies, the Japanese currency, uh, revalued and the US dollar uh, devalued relative to the Japanese currency, the yen. But this time, Trump who is a much more straightforward man, has done it in a much more straightforward way. He's imposed tariffs on the Chinese. And I think here again, we have Donald Trump, the, the, uh, the great negotiator. He's partly doing it because he calculates that China will lose more from a trade war than the US will. So um, he's going to push the Chinese in this way in order to strike a deal with them further down the line, whereby the Chinese will agree to limit imports to the US, will buy more US products, and that will mean that the trade balance, which has been heavily in China's favor, will adjust eventually in favor of the US. Will it work? I think it will work for Donald Trump. I think politically, his blue collar working class uh, uh, electorate are cheering, cheering him all the way on this. Uh, will it change the fundamental economic realities of the US? I rather doubt because I suspect what will happen is that whatever products China is trying to sell to the US, which it can't sell now, other countries will simply fill the gap. And we will find that the nature and structure of the US economy has changed so much that it will not be able to benefit from these tariffs to the extent that Donald Trump thinks it will. Are you hinting that um, in the short term, Trump will come out a winner, especially because of the 2018 midterm elections? But are you hinting that in the medium to long term, the US might actually lose because China has more markets at its disposal? 
I think that's well. I think that's I think that's uh, absolutely right. First of all, I think it will firm up Donald Trump's political constituency in the U.S. And let us be very clear: he is a very clever politician. I, I mean, we've both been saying this for a long time. This is not some sort of buffoon. He knows what he is doing, and he is being extremely effective about this. Um, I don't think it will change fundamentally the economic realities of the United States unless other parts of Donald Trump's economic program are successful in the sense that he's planning a major expend on infrastructure. He will try, I think, to get to use that to support US industry. I think he might also try other forms of uh, um, economic management, indeed, including currency manipulation, to try to help and uh, uh, support U.S. industry. My own view is that the U.S. has passed by that, uh, uh, the, that, that kind of stage of economic development where these sort of protectionist me measures are going to help. What this will, however, also do, and we've got to look at China now. China, as you correctly say, is now the world's largest trading country in terms of trade in durable uh, goods and in manufactured goods. It has plenty of markets around the world. It has already for some time been less dependent on trade with the US than it was. It's holding steady its uh, uh, ownership of US Treasury bonds. It's not increasing them. So it has already been distancing itself economically from the US for some time. And I think that what will happen is that the Chinese will accelerate all of this. And to the extent that a good connection between the US and China is of benefit to the US, which should not want China as an economic and political rival, I think this will eventually play against US interests. And so not only is Trump targeting China, he's also targeting Europe. Do you think he's, he's biting off just too, more than he can chew here because he's, he's almost creating, I mean, I guess you could say he is creating a, a global trade war in essence. Um, is, is this just taking it too far? I think he is. I, I think not for the not for the immediate term. I think we're going to see a couple of years where uh, I personally expect the U.S. economy to grow faster uh, as a result of some of the things Donald Trump is doing. Not so much these protectionist measures that he's taking, but the fact that he is uh, um, cutting taxes in the U.S. and increasing spending in the U.S. and um, is at the same time doing this at a time when the Federal Reserve is tightening up dollar. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the monetary policy in the US. I think all that is going to act as a boost to the US economy. And it's going to mean that people are going to need dollars because of, greater, uh, 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 of a, a reduction of liquidity, which will support the dollar. So I think you'll be able to do that for a time. And I think we will see an acceleration of economic growth in the US. But in the longer term, and we're talking now about four, five years, what we will probably see is that more and more countries, the European Union, China, Russia, of course, an important economic power. We must not underestimate Russia. Japan also and the other Asian states are going to say to themselves that the United States is not the pivotal economic player in the world economy that it once was. It is going its own way. It is now putting up barriers to our trade with it. So we've got to forge economic links with each other. And that will also mean inevitably in time that that will mean a lesser role for the dollar. So when you look at it in those terms and bearing and remember how important the dollar is, not just to the US economy, but it's to its political influence, then I think that we will start to see a move away from the US and over time a, a, a weakening of US positions, both politically and economically around the world. Uh, you kind of got my my final question to you, and it focuses on the dollar, because w when I was reading and researching this, this, this story, two words, came, two words came out to me. One was the dollar, and the other one was uh, a lot of the, the tariffs are based on oil, natural gas, and oil products. And of course, you get to the petrodollar. 
So do you see in five years and five years uh, extended outwards that we may actually be witnessing and partly due to this trade war, maybe it's, maybe it's getting accelerated because of this trade war. Do you think that in five years, if five years extended forward, that we may actually be seeing the petrodollar um, at, on, on its last legs? I think so. And I think we need to explain how important that is, because, of course, oil is the single most important and widely traded good. Um, it means that uh, it, no economy, no economy of any kind anywhere can function without oil. We are nowhere near a po post oil world, which some people have been talking about. And that's good. So it's going to remain that way for the foreseeable future. Now, oil internationally has been traded in dollars. And the fact that people have to buy oil in dollars has underpinned dollar supremacy. It is the single most important fact in making the dollar the world's reserve currency. Now, we are moving away from that position where the dollar is, in fact, necessary for oil to, for, for oil to continue to be traded. China is going to soon overtake the U.S. as the major importer of, of dollars, uh, of oil. Um, and as you correctly say, we're seeing all these tariffs and barriers and restrictions by the U.S. on trade in energy products, in oil and gas. So logically, oil producers are going to start saying to themselves, do we really want to be paid in dollars anymore? Shouldn't we be paid in uh, um, Chinese currency, in RMBs, or, or perhaps in gold, which is the fact what um, how the, 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 the item that they used to measure the, uh, uh, trade in oil before the dollar took, took over in the 1970s, or something else. And at that point, we could easily see the end of the petrodollar. And if we see the end of the petrodollar, we will see, before very long, the end of the dollar's position as the world's single reserve currency. And major geopolitical ramifications as well, correct? Co colossal, because the dollar, I think much more than the, more than the US military, is the major underpinning of American power. I mean, we've talked in the past, for example, about the sanctions that the US imposes on various countries. What is the major uh, leverage the US has when it imposes sanctions? Why is it that companies, European companies, won't, for example, trade with Iran when the US is imposing sanctions on Iran. It is that these country, these companies have to do their business in dollars. If that is no longer the case, the US loses most of its leverage over them. And that greatly undermines its political power and its strategic reach. I must add, it does something else too, which is that, of course, it also changes the economic balance within the United States itself. Because one of the reasons why the U United States is able to run budget deficits and trade deficits, and has been doing so for so long, uh, and in such a way, and pay for, for example, this massive military that it has, is because it doesn't have to worry like other countries do about the strength of its currency. It can print dollars in the knowledge that because the dollar is the world's reserve currency, people internationally have to have it. If the dollar simply becomes like any other currency, that is no longer true anymore. And the United States will at that point have to follow financial and monetary policies like those of other countries uh, and uh, take uh, precautions to protect its position economically, which it doesn't have to do now. Well, can you also, uh, in closing, can you also make the assumption that if all these countries uh, don't uh, trade as much or as often in dollars, all those dollars have to come home, don't they? And that would lead to... <laughs> Absolutely. Well, 
right. I mean, this is one of the other major things, which is, of course, that if we get into a situation where uh, uh, the dollar ceases to be a reserve currency and we have these vast holdings of dollars around the world, then that, of course, is going to cause enormous economic problems for the United States. And here we have actually a good historical example, because after the Second World War, the pound sterling, which had previously been a reserve currency like the dollar, ceased to be. And you had around the world lots and lots of people holding uh, sterling. And the result was that they wanted to get rid of their sterling balances as quickly as they could and as efficiently as they could. The result was that the first 30 years of post-war British history, there was a constant pattern of sterling crises, which um, undoubtedly weakened the internal structure and working of the British economy. It took a very long time for that to unwind, and in the process it did an awful lot of damage. I think in the case of the US, it will take far less time because the dollar will not be supported to the extent that sterling was, because sterling during those 30 years, functioned within a fixed exchange rate system. In a floating currency system, we could very easily see a, a very significant crisis in the dollar and a major rise in inflation in the United States. This is, uh, uh, to me, this story is, is really just beginning. And, and while it may seem like it's a trade war between China and the US, I think that the ramifications of, of what Trump has set into motion may accelerate um, massive changes across the world, both economically and geopolitically, as you outlined, uh, Alexander, so well to, to our viewers. So, so that's, that's, the, that's Trump's, the beginning of Trump's trade war with China. Everybody, if you liked the video, click the subscribe button down below. Click the notifications bell to get more notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Duran shop, buy a t-shirt, and help support the Duran. Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Everybody out there, thank you very much. Take care until next time.